So here's a question for you. How do you squeeze 18 litres into a two litre engine bay? Um, and the quick answer is with great difficulty. Um, but we'll have a look in a minute and see how it's going. Um, first of all, just apologies really for the long overdue update. Um, and there's quite a lot going on here. Obviously the engine's now back in the chassis. Um, so I'm probably gonna split this up into several videos um, in, in order to cover it properly. The first thing that's apparent here is the lack of space for a radiator. Um, that's now been mounted to the back as you'll see in a minute. Um, this space inside here was actually hollow. The radiator in the original vehicle sat behind it. So um, what we're going to do is there's going to be a charge cooler fitted to this which is basically for cooling the boost from the turbos into the engine. So we're going to need some space in here anyway for that. Um, And when I designed this gearbox, um, which is basically just for driving the oil pumps, and it gives you the um, crankshaft pickup wheel. I also put um, a shaft above it there, which runs at one, about one and a half times engine speed. And it was gonna be for driving an alternator because that is the only accessory on here. Um, <clears throat> and I must admit, I didn't really think where I was gonna put it, so. Um, I've now managed to solve that problem without using this in fact. Um, I was thinking the alternator was probably going to go down here somewhere but obviously you've got suspension, steering, various different things in the way. But this really shows you um, how close fitting everything actually is. We're in the huge amount of room along the sides um, <clears throat> between the engine and the chassis. Um, I wanted to keep the original leaf spring suspension, as you can see there, to begin with at least anyway. Um, and so it's been backed up with coil overs, which is basically a damper with a, a coil spring. And the um, rating of these coil springs can be changed if necessary. Um, it's obviously got a, a bespoke front axle because it's no longer four wheel drive. This steering box is Range Rover P38. And it's quite a common conversion on um, series Land Rovers, which didn't have power steering. Um, but in fact, on this one, I'm not using the power steering um, because, as I mentioned, I'm not running any accessories off the engine just due to lack of space. So that would mean I wouldn't be able to have a power steering pump. So the power steering section, which is this piece here, isn't being used. Um, and I'm actually using an electric um, power steering device, which is used on Vauxhall um, courses um, and it has an electronic ECU with it. Um, so one of the points here is that I'm just going to build it like it is um, but this steering box is really really heavy and um, also to a certain extent a bit more heavy duty than it needs to be as well so um, eventually that's going to be changed for something else or it is just quite possible I just build um, a billet aluminium housing um, and do away with the hydraulic power assistance part of it and just put the internals into that. So I've got options there. Um, since the engine was on the um, dynamometer and it's now been put into the chassis, you can see um, the boost outlet from this turbo um, now basically will foul with the uh, steering linkage. Um, because we moved this turbo forward, it's actually changed position at one point since the engine was built. So we need to make a new boost pipe to join those two together. Um, on the other side, it's all as it was and it's all working and fitting in fine. Um, but due to various parts on the engine that get in the way, it means this one has to have a fairly tight elbow down in front of the passenger footwell, whereas the turbo on the other side has got plenty of room. Um, but you know, <laughs> that's just the nature of trying to fit something like this in. Um, and I mean, I'm quite pleased with it. It's, it's quite a long way back in the chassis, as you can see there. Um, moving around to inside, we've had to make some alteration to the firewall just to make it wider. So, you know, th this makes the footwells quite narrow, um, you know, which is exacerbated a bit by the roll cage as well. 
But really, I'm quite pleased because we haven't altered the interior of this vehicle very much. Um, and, you know, you can even take the race seat or race seats out. Um, the quick release steering wheel, I also have the original steering wheel with the quick release on it, so I can put that in. It's quite big actually, it touches your legs obviously. Um, but this, this can be returned to a very standard interior. Um, <clears throat> there's the brains of the outfit, that's the ECU um, and the uh, instrument panel. The original instrument panel is going to go back here where it was, so we'll have a speedometer and various other things. Um, the all the electrics are going to be easily accessible right here in the middle um, and I think probably all the switches for engine starting and um, fuel pumps and so on are probably going to be in here um, again because I don't really want to start adding too much stuff um, inside the vehicle that wasn't there you know because otherwise you know you reach a point where it's no longer a sleeper anymore and you don't want that um, here's the uh, position of the radiator it's not been fitted yet and there's a hole in the floor of the tub there where we'll have some duct work under there which brings air up through the floor into the there's a low pressure area so around here behind the cab so that tends to help draw the air at least back out of the radiator here um, it'll also have a couple of really big cooling fans on it as well um, so a lot of this will have to be boxed in with aluminium I think it's fair to say this vehicle wasn't built for comfort anyway uh, and it wasn't built for tall people either um, and that's before this seat was fitted because it pushes me forward a bit um, but I mean prior to this being fitted it used to sit on top of effectively a toolbox on top of a petrol tank so we've certainly improved one of those things because the petrol tank's now right at the back out of harm's way. On the passenger side here that's the oil tank um, because the engine is a dry sump so that means basically the oil's pumped to and from an oil tank, through filters, through an oil cooler. And actually the components inside here are from an aircraft um, dry sump oil tank because that's for obvious reasons on an aircraft, that's what they do. Um, and we fitted it, it in under the seat in the same way that the fuel tank was originally fitted under the driver's seat. And it's quite a neat place to put it. I mean in here, for a lot of things, there's plenty of room in this vehicle for fitting stuff. It's just the engine really which um, causes the issue. And one of the reasons, again, um, that I thought this was a good vehicle to use, um, the, the, the most important thing, of course, was that it was a Rover car because the engine was built by Rover and it was built, the engine was actually built in 1953. Um, and this, this Land Rover is 1956. So, you know, they could have been put together at the time, in theory. Um, and I'll show you now um one of the other things i like about it um i mean i mentioned in a previous um update on facebook that i like the fact that you can just put a chain block through from above and lift the transmission in and out because the floor comes out of this thing so all sorts of stuff like that because i'm not really i'm not experienced at working on cars this is more like a, a meccano set this thing so let's take all the floor out and see what's going on underneath <laughs> is going. Um, the engine has a gear train at the back of it which is what I'm already using to drive the cam belt um, and that gear train was originally on the engine it was used to run the governor and also a hydraulic pump um, so it's quite handy <clears throat> because it's a much larger engine than anything automotive normally you know it's um, it's always it was going to be difficult to get the cam belt to work and so on so 
And what you've got in the middle there is a shaft running at crankshaft speed, um, which I'm using to drive the, the cam belt. Um, and I looked at various different possibilities of putting the alternator on the front of the engine where there wasn't a lot of room, um, right through to running um, a shaft along the side of the engine here. And actually quite a neat place to put the alternator would be down there. You've got the starter on the other side there. Um, and I could have run a belt. I mean, then I started thinking, well, hang on, I can run a belt off um, the back of the engine here. Um, because if you look across where the firewall goes, it's, it's in front of it. So there's room to get a belt drive in there. Um, but it was difficult. I mean, difficult to get through the gap where those struts are and so on. Um, then it dawned on me that actually the alternator will fit underneath what is effectively the transmission tunnel on this vehicle because there was enough room. Um, and that's one of the things about building something without actually making full sets of drawings beforehand. You tend to kind of come across stuff like this as you go along. Um, and so that's a neat solution. Um, there isn't much up and down adjustment on that alternator before you hit the tunnel. Um, so it might be I'll use a tensioner, but um, that, that works really neatly. And it's kind of not in the way of anything else. Um, and I mean, anything that shifts the weight further back as well is a good thing. Um, and you can see the overdrive underneath there, which we talked about before. Um, transmission there. And uh, all that fits in really neatly. And uh, here's the oil tank. Another great space saving idea which Land Rover used originally on this um, was that the brake master cylinder was there underneath the floor. Um, and so now we've just basically got a, a modern brake um, vacuum servo master cylinder. Um, and the only difference is we put it further back, which is where the petrol tank used to be actually, um, just because of the size of it. But again, that, that's something which we'll probably really struggle to fit underneath the bonnet. So that's a neat place to put that because there's nothing else going there. And this shows you just how tight some things are in here. You've got um, the steering system running through there underneath the turbo. The turbo has to have quite a substantial support um, so you're not hanging it off the side of the manifold um, because it will crack. Um, there's the um, wastegate valve um, which also has to fit in there. Um, and then there's a turbo oil drain, which has to run over the top of the steering. So that's on this side, on the uh, driver's side of the engine. Um, on the other side of the engine, there isn't quite so much stuff in the way. Um, there's a support strut for the turbo, which isn't fitted at the moment. It actually goes onto there and it runs down onto the, a bracket on the side of the crankcase. Just there. Um, and so there's a bit more room to play with, but um, the oil pressure relief valve on the side of the crankcase is there, so you have to get your oil drain from the turbo to go past that, um, and all the various pipes and things that are coming off it. But um, it's still a bit of a squeeze, and we've also got to run the coolant return pipes. Um, one from the front of the head and one from the back of the head have all got to go down there. And then the coolant inlet pipe is that aluminium one you can see right in the middle of the picture there. That's got to be connected up. So there'll be quite a lot of large diameter, um, sort of inch and a quarter, an inch and a half diameter pipes um, running along the chassis there to the radiator. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to follow progress on this project, you can follow it on Facebook, which is Land Rover Meteorite. And also um, my YouTube channel, which is Flight Engineering One, which is all one word and the number one. Right, I'm going to get back onto it. This is a list of jobs still waiting to be done on it, so um, I'm probably going to be here a while. <laughs>